What's up, guys? Uh, we're continuing to explore sidelines against Sicilians because you know how much like we like to play on a win and to play dragon or night earth. And uh, I just have to teach you how to play against the sidelines. In today's lecture, I just want to teach you how to play against e4, c5, and f4. Many of you um, ask me in the past. Is this kind of Grand Prix attack? No, it's not. But it may transpose if you, playing black, don't know how to treat F4 properly. And we all know that the Grand Prix attack could be very dangerous, especially if you go from the different or, let's just say, bad order moves. What's the real name of the F4? It's called McDonald attack for white. It's really attack. You know we had some Brince Fi a video here that I made like a year ago for white with very spectacular sacrifices by white but we're not gonna give them uh, that privilege and chance to go with the crazy stuff so you just have to play d5 yourself what's so special about this d5 um, it's good because you're immediately showing <coughs> sorry you're immediately taking an action in the center and showing your like preferences to play active and not to give them any chance of like doing any kind of Grand Prix setups with knight c3, f4, bishop c4, and afterwards with the kingside attack. Also, we don't want to go with g6 because that usually transposes into the Grand Prix and it's always a double edge type of the game. We go with d5. And uh, after d5, there are so many options for white. I'm just briefly going to explain you how should you treat these type of games. If they play e5, it's mistake. And uh, this is quite dangerous for white players because they play a bad version of French or Karakan type of positions. A bad version of French because in French, our light square bishop is always weak. In this case, it's still open and it's good. So we play knight c6, they go knight f3. And here, you just go with the bishop g4. Before we play a typical uh, French position, we're just solving the problem of the light square bishop by taking it out, playing bishop g4, and afterwards, we just want to go with e6, knight e7, and so on. After bishop e2, e6, castles, knight e7, uh, you just want to... Um, place your knight on the most logical square f5 afterwards controlling the center c3 knight f5 and now these guys can go with d4 d4 would be disaster because you take on f3 and that's how you actually uh, take advantage of the bishop on g4 and that's how you get an improvement over the french um, since we really uh, give some role to the light square bishop instead of just standing on c8 in the case of knight a3, to play knight c2 and to have like a solid control of the center, we just go with these natural moves and you know what? Uh, good players will avoid d4 with white pieces. Bad players uh, will try to do d4 and eventually they're going to lose the d4 pawn because when they play d4, we just have to play bishop takes f3, c takes d4 and play queen b6. And the d4 pawn is about to fall. Uh, although those good players who play this, they just have to know that we want to control the light squares with h5. Black is um, black, black has a very pleasant type of the game here. Yes, we do have like a better game. Uh, it's not so much better. According to the engines, black is, is much better. Uh, I wouldn't say so. In, in, in the practice, it could be a little bit difficult to prove this type of advantage, but I just know that we have to play some queen b6 for d8, d4, and jump with the knight on e3 at some point and to break them on the dark squares. Not so easy. Uh, so that's, that's about e5. d3, uh, I, I'm simply not that kind of a player who's going to teach you uh, to play uh, d takes c4 and to go into an endgame, but of course that we shouldn't have anything against this type of an endgame. Uh, although I'm not a big fan of endgames, although in comparison to the reverse Dutch and the second move bishop e2, where they take by bishop e2 and bishop d1, king on d1 is kind of weak, and at least this is sort of 
uh, okay position for black in comparison to that one. And of course, you just go with knight c6. And after knight c6, when they go knight f3, you just go with e6. And suggestion is to go with the bishop d6 and knight g and e7, the most flexible setup. And this is uh, what also uh, Giri suggested in his course, uh, saying that we should be playing. Uh, you know that I call this system Moldavian system against the French defense. And this is absolutely fine, good, uh, flexible for a black, and you shouldn't avoid the systems. If they play bishop b5, uh, this is one of those boring moves where they keep on exchanging pieces. Of course, we gotta play bishop d7. Uh, you're not supposed to play knight c6 because they would take and create a weak pawn structure in the black's camp. So we go with bishop d7, they capture, and we always capture by queen. When they play d3, we once again don't want to go into that endgame and play like this. Afterwards, we want to play bishop d6, knight g and e7. Uh, we sometimes want to go with, uh, in, in some of these positions, uh, long castle if you like, if you prefer like crazy type of games, but I prefer bishop d6, knight g and e7 and short castle with um, very, uh, not even decent, very pleasant type of game without any opening problems. And finally, uh, let's take a look at the most challenging one, it takes d5. It takes d5, you never capture by queen, uh, because uh, I remember Grandmaster Kuprejcik, uh, a Belarusian GM, uh, who was a very tactical player, made one beautiful win against a good friend of mine with knight c3, queen d8, b3, and he really demolished this guy in 20 moves. After e takes d5, you should play this like a Portuguese tango knight f6. And this really looks like Icelandic gambit, for example, if they play c4. Any knight c3 just leads to that equal position, knight d5, queen d5, and with queen f3, never help your opponent by taking an f3 and developing their pieces with tempo. At least do something. Uh, I believe that e6 is pretty fine. I believe that uh, queen e6, because you know that I always like to avoid uh, queen exchanges, uh, is absolutely fine, and we just want to go with knight c6, g6, with a good control of the central d4 square afterwards, as well as, um, since we avoided to, to exchange queens, our position looks fine. Although c4 is something that happened to me so many times in blitz and bullet games, and I destroyed my opponents. How? In the fashion of Icelandic Gambit, and that's why I'm pretty sure you're going to like this one a lot because we go with e6 so after d takes bishop takes we now have uh, already two pieces developed well they have lots of problems on the dark squares in their game and uh, possibly weak king after knight f3 knight c6 uh, you never give them chance to play d4 uh, if they play Bishop e2, you just go bishop d6 going after this pawn. G3, d3, you play queen c7 again and play long castles. And th that's not a problem. You just have an ideal development, all your minor pieces uh, in safety. This is fantastic. And you just want to go with some, I don't know, bishop f5, knight b4, uh, and stuff like that. The thing is, if they play knight f3, knight c6, and they go knight c3, uh, why is that? uh different from previous line because when you play bishop d6 and uh, if in this case after bishop d6 they just play d3 you cannot play queen c7 because they have this annoying knight b5 and now i have have two options you can play a6 which is a little bit slow with the idea of queen c7 castles and rook h2 8 that's how i used to play or you can just play short castle with an immediate uh, rook e8 and a position where you claim compensation on the spot like this. This is also pretty good, pretty cool. You can even play a6, queen c7, and rook a to d8 here. All things considered, in this Icelandic approach, in this McDonald attack, you just absolutely don't care about the fact that you're down a pawn and you just go for a full piece compensation. And finally, when they play, it takes d5. 
and uh, if in this case they just go with uh, bishop to b5 uh, by the way if knight c3 you just take on d5 exchange everything i told you queen e6 yeah yeah we spoke about this already and uh, finally bishop to b5 if bishop to b5 uh, i used to think uh, that knight bd7 was absolutely the um, let's just say coolest approach by black although I played against one Latvian, uh, I believe he used to be an IM and nowadays he's a GM. And he used to uh, play some very annoying systems against Knight BD7. And then I did some research, uh, made some analysis on, on the iCloud Stockfish engines. Those are the strongest engines and I came up with the Bishop D7. Makes no sense because you sacrifice the pawn and now you're exchanging the light square bishops. Where is the compensation? Compensation is here. I'm about to get a pawn on d5. If c4, uh, if c4, I just play e6. Once again, we got a same Icelandic gambit approach. When they take, it's very important to know that this type of an endgame is cool for us because of a couple of things. Yes, we're down a pawn, but they have problem with the backward pawn. They have problem with a great outpost. We always threaten knight before threatening knight c2, knight c2 but more likely. Uh, controlling the d3 square also we'd like to go with this bishop somewhere and to go with the rook h to e8 we certainly have slightly better position and a great positional uh, compensation uh, apart from that if they go queen e2 we just go bishop d6 and i remember when i analyzed this at first glance d3 castles d takes f takes i couldn't simply believe my eyes that we can claim compensation in a game like this. Because after knight f3, knight c6, castles rook a to e8, you just want to break with e5. And remember, I believe Kasparovar Sveshnikov played a game like this with a black pieces. And at that time, I said, okay, they played like this. But can it be that black is so good even though he's down a pawn? And at that time, I believe it was a couple of years ago, I didn't believe simply that black could be so good in this position and then once again after all these years after checking on these top engines uh, i just realized that the idea of breaking in the center with e5 and eventually breaking with e4 is so lethal by black so when they play knight c3 you play e5 and they gotta go f5 As i say they gotta go if they capture you capture they capture you can capture by bishop, you can capture by rook, but you threaten check, you threaten here, check, queen is here, d3 is weak, our rooks are open, and position is hardly defendable. That's why they play f5, trying to get a position closed. And I even remember playing a blitz game many years ago against um, some pretty strong GM. Uh, I played knight d4. Uh, hoping that uh, he's gonna make mistake and uh, capture on d4 if that happens you just take like this and uh, after knight e4 you just take on e4 and after this you just take on f5 and you take advantage of the fact that the queen is on e2 and you just have an amazing initiative afterwards uh, they gotta go queen d1 retreating this queen and the crucial move is to stop knight g5 or bishop g5 idea by by white bishop g5 because they'd like to take and jump on d5 or an e4 knight g5 because they would like to uh, get a hold of the light squares and possibly to go with uh, either knight e6 or knight e4 afterwards here crucial move is h6 we stop this we stop both of these ideas and f pawn f5 pawn is about to uh, fall uh, fall down so after knight e4, you can just play knight f5. And I wouldn't go deeper than this because black already looks so cool, so good. And uh, d3 pawn is going to be a permanent weakness. Okay, our bishop on d6 is not better anyways. But we're always happy if we give it up. If not, uh, at least we have a great position, position where I don't see particular problems for black. Uh, in some variations, I may go with the bishop c7 and bishop a5 with that bishop. In some positions, bishop c7, if you're willing to take on c5, you're going to lose with bishop b6. 
I'm happy to go with the bishop c7 because it's going to give me an option of rook d8, possibly going after the pawn on d3. Black looks good. I tried to make this video as short as possible so you can easily cope with all these ideas and uh, nothing. Just keep on supporting the channel and uh, let's just go for a couple of million view, uh, views soon and uh, much more of this quality content. Thank you so much and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.